The career of veteran newscaster Lowell Thomas goes back to the very first days of radio. He was a pioneering announcer on pioneering station KDKA in Pittsburgh and even reported on the flight of Charles Lindbergh. He then had a distinguished career at NBC, finally moving over to CBS. And that is where many of us first heard Lowell Thomas. But along the way, he wrote books, an enormous book about Lawrence of Arabia, traveled the world, did documentaries. He narrated newsreels that millions watched every week in theaters, narrated adventure shows for television, and continued to do his Monday through Friday 15-minute newscast on CBS. Originally, as with all network newscasts, there was a second announcer who opened and closed the show. But as radio slimmed down in the 70s, he became a one-man band. Finally, CBS shortened his time from 15 minutes a night to five minutes. And two of those minutes were devoted to commercials. So here is Lowell Thomas's final five-minute newscast, as heard at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on the night of Friday... May 14th, 1976. From Salisbury, Rhodesia, from Islamabad, Pakistan, and from Juneau, Alaska, comes today's news. Good evening, everybody. This is Lowell Thomas. At Louisville, President Ford was combining business with politics, signing into law a bill allowing him to mobilize 50,000 military reservists, if needed, for up to 90 days. The president later to address an Armed Forces Day dinner, and he's calling the reservist bill an essential in this nuclear age, adding, if we are forced to fight again, the next war is likely to be right where you are. Democrat Jimmy Carter was meeting with AFL-CIO leader George Meany in Washington, and later he said if he wins that nomination, he's confident that labor is going to support him. And now this message. You've listened to the taste of stock dry vermouth. Now listen to the taste of some of the well-known white wines. Notice the similarity? That's because Stock Dry is a crystal clear white wine. And then some. Listen to the exotic herbs we add to it. Just a little, but just enough to add excitement. Here's Stock's refreshing delicacy. Notice the subtle suggestion of playful intrigue. Imported stock dry is perhaps the ultimate white wine. But enough of listening. It's time for tasting. Try imported stock dry vermouth, chilled straight or on the rocks. Once you do, you'll never listen to another white wine. Stock sweet and dry vermouth distillery of stock Trieste, Italy. In guerrilla fighting in Rhodesia, 15 more deaths, followed by mobilization of army reserves to deal with the terrorists. Also a warning to Cuba to keep hands off. Rhodesian Defense Minister Peter Vanderbilt saying, if Cuban troops attack us, we'll beat the life out of them. Also a warning to us to lay off Cuba in the communist newspaper Pravda, charging the U.S. with waging an unbridled anti-Cuban campaign, adding, the Soviet Union cannot remain indifferent to threats and pressure on the freedom island of Cuba. After four years of negotiation following their 1971 war, India and Pakistan have formally agreed to resume diplomatic relations. The reconciliation announced jointly at Islamabad. And here's an item I probably shouldn't use. It's from Juneau, Alaska. Relayed on the phone a moment ago from the Alaskan LT, the Lieutenant Governor. It says that it's an honor of one of Alaska's great friends, a pioneer spirit of the great land. Wonder who that is. Here are the exact words. Be it resolved that the members of the Alaskan State Legislature offer congratulations to Lowell Thomas Sr., America's preeminent broadcast journalist, not only for contributions to that profession, but most importantly, for his service to the nation and the state of Alaska. Adding, in tribute to his personal and professional achievements in recognition of his association with this state for more than six decades, we hereby designate Lowell Thomas Sr. an honorary citizen of Alaska. Further saying, the members of the legislature wish him success in his future endeavors, which hardly sounds like retirement. Now, modesty should have kept me from reading that. And now, this message. Last year, at the beginning of the tick season, Hearts Mountain introduced the incredible Hearts 2-in-1 collar. The white collar you now see on so many dogs and cats. 
And for all those pets, terrible ticks were no longer a problem. This year, make sure your pet is wearing the white collar, the heart's two-in-one collar. It really kills ticks and fleas. Just ask a friend whose pet wears one. Get the white collar, the heart's two-in-one collar. It kills both ticks and fleas. Hi, America. Hello. Looking for the heart of a great meal? Are we? Then look for Mrs. Paul's Fish Fillets. Good food that goes with... Macaroni? Mmm, makes a good balance. What makes Mrs. Paul's Fish Fillets taste so good? We thought of you. Ah. And made them just like you would. Oh? Yep, we start with mild white fish, dip it in the crispiest of breadcrumbs. We even include our creator sauce mix. That's great. Uh, Mrs. Paul? Yes? You are the greatest. On a spot news program like this, there's hardly time to do what I'd like to do at this moment. As you may have heard, I'll be off radio for a while, but there's nothing in the rumor that I'm retiring. Nothing. On the contrary, I'll probably be busier and more involved than ever. But tonight, I do want to thank all of my associates. And I want to go way back to the beginning, 46 years ago, and pay a special tribute to Bill Paley and also to General Sarnoff. They were the first to put me on the air with what has been the longest-running broadcast of any sort, not just news. Seems odd that at one time I had all the air of the entire world to myself alone to tell about the day-by-day -day adventures of the human race. Human interest, adventure, colorful stories from around the globe have been my specialty, and the present radio format allows only enough time for headlines. To the members of my staff and to my colleagues with whom I have worked here at CBS and for many years at NBC and the other networks too, ABC before it was ABC, it's impossible to tell them how grateful I am. And the same to all of you who have been listening. I'll be off on a brief vacation, perhaps doing some glacier skiing in the mountains of British Columbia and Alaska. Instead of my usual so long until tomorrow or until Monday since this is Friday, tonight it will simply be here's to all of you. So long. And Lowell Thomas did travel the world more and write more, but he would live only five more years after this final broadcast.